Hey, what's up, Excel Ultimate? Welcome to another newsletter video. Today, we got a special project for you where we break down one of the best marks I have ever seen on film, and then we get a chance to talk to Troy Holland himself and hear how Ulti World's second runner up, Defensive Player of the Year, was able to set the perfect mark. Let's take a look. All right, let's start by looking at the film first. We're just going to let the play roll from start to finish. Matt Russell looking to break the mark. Determined to break the mark. That's Troy a Troy Holland wouldn't let him have it. We have a force flick mark on, kind of trapping the sideline, and a negative reset. So right now when Troy's player 30 is going to be catching the disc, there's going to be nobody in the reset space, and that's going to help Troy realize where the threats are and where they're not. Um, as you'll hear from him later, it's really important to know these things and kind of have a plan going into the mark so you're not just aimlessly chasing the disc, getting broken, or in the wrong position. So as we kind of play a few frames, you're going to notice that the force flick mark is in. And also a really important part to this is the thrower is holding flick too. You know, even if it's if it's forced flick and your player's kind of stepped out in a and maybe a big backhand stance, like over here, holding the disc out, you can definitely take a few steps over there and try to stop that throw. You know, we call it stopping the shown throw. And it's really important, you know, even though technically you do have to force one way. You can cheat a little bit um, depending on where the, the thrower is holding the disc. Uh, the next thing that we're going to see as we kind of go frame by frame is the thrower is going to try to throw a couple of shimmies to break the mark. You can even hear it in, in the announcer. But Troy does a good job of, if you look at his uh, width and his base, look at these uh, legs and just how wide he is. That's going to allow him to keep his center of mass low and also you know he's not lunging he's got his legs are wider than his hips and his shoulders you know he's not going to be like that teapot leaning over so here's our first shimmy you see the disc kind of come out to the uh, opposite size of, of the thrower's body and, and you're not going to see troy all of a sudden lunge way over here with that base and athletic stance He's now able to kind of stay right upright. And, you know, as the disc came back, um, you know, from here, it's coming, coming back. He's only bit a couple of inches. So he's really still in position, stays with the shimmy, and then throws that left hand out to start to attack um, this cut right here. So Troy's already stopped one look. Now he's stopping the second look with that uh, flash with the hand. And we're even going to take a look. He's going to stop eventually two or three more looks. So now we're kind of getting towards that stall four, stall five, stall counts rising. And now we have our second shimmy. You know, if you see from here, he dips his shoulders, tries to hit this inside window. And look, our defender uh, at the front of the stack has already slipped. So now this player is going to be wide open for this inside. If Troy had fallen even more for the shimmy, then this break would have easily come up and Sakai would have been off to the races on the break side. But by staying home, staying wide, staying balanced, Troy's essentially stopped a player who doesn't even have a defender on them. The next look is equally important. You see as Troy puts pressure on that inside, now the thrower has recognized that since Troy stopped this throw, they want to pivot over to break around. Most marks aren't going to be able to kind of stop both sides. But since Troy is so upright and balanced, now as the thrower starts to really step out, you'll notice in this frame, the player with the disc has committed to this backhand. Their right foot's off the ground traveling. Now Troy, for the first time, stands upright. 
two feet right next to each other so he can push off the left foot and cover that around. Now you'll hear kind of Troy's uh, philosophy here on this foot flash, but basically after he takes those two steps, gets that foot way up, again, this player is still wide open and the thrower really wants to get it there. But since Troy's foot is now in the throwing lane, he has to pump fake again. And this time the stall is probably eight or nine. Um, I didn't count, but we have a wide open Sakai player getting looked off just because of the mark. And now they're forced to throw kind of a high stall bailout, which goes to nobody and results in a turnover. So now that we've looked at it on film, we get a great chance to actually talk to Troy himself and hear what's going through his mind as a mark, specifically for this play and also in general. Let's listen up. Always come in uh, with a plan. So I think in this play, we were running, uh, not a necessarily sell out on the around, but we wanted to take away the around throw. So I think in the mark, if I'm, if I'm going back to it in my mind, we're not gonna wanna sit way behind Rowan and kind of give him the inside lane. We wanna stay necessarily even with him. But the whole point of the mark then is to challenge all of his throws. If he's got his, his, his uh, disc in his flick side, I want the main part of my body covering that. Now, if he shimmies with his body, I'm just staying with the disc. If he wants to move the disc a little more to the center with his shimmy, I might move a little bit to the center. But I'm not gonna go for something way around with a little shimmy. I think in the mark, the big kind of to-do is, eventually when he actually commits to something, I'm not falling over with my body. I'm not lunging. I want my body to stay straight up. The key is then that these movements are small, 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 small. And I think once he commits to kind of an around throw, I want to get myself into a position where I'm balanced. We talk about balance in throwing, but think about balance when you're marking. And kind of a hot tip that I learned in college was whenever you're going for a foot block, it's significantly easier to kind of block down as opposed to block up. Because if Rowan decides to then pivot back, if I block down, I'm already having a, a base to now come back. If I block up, I'm way out and it's just an easy route. 